broads are definitely underestimating what it yes. takes to actually make certain video games. Correct. Like there was someone making an FPS that wanted a few hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And whoever wrote this article somewhere, it wasn't Chris Kohler, it was someone else. But they said anyone who says they can make an FPS for less than, like a modern looking FP, FPS for less than $2 million is either lying mind. or just or has just, no good just doesn't know what they're what doing. It takes. Right. Exactly. It's, but see, that's that's the whole way that this gets started, right? Right. But something because, like Minecraft. Yeah, absolutely. Well, just, that, that's just so novel of an idea. It, right. It's so disruptive. It's different. It's like Steve so Jobs. Is right? that I what mean, indie it's... games have to be nowadays? If it's not, if it's not, yes, the prettiest or or nicest looking thing like Call of Duty or Modern Warfare, does it have to just be? Does it have to be different in order to set itself apart? Yes, you can't I can't have a bunch of Mario clones. I think I think it does because mm-hmm. and that's again where the where the industry and the marketplace <clears throat> takes over. Like Zombie Gadget just said. Right? They tend so, to experiment. It, they tend to experiment and, and, and that's the thing, guys. You know, think about it. When when you have the reason you the monolithic publishers become really big is because they make really good decisions. Because mm-hmm. they go out there and they vet the people that they're trying to pitch them games and they go, You guys are idiots, we're not making that game. And then they look at somebody else and they go, that's a really awesome concept. We'll make that one. And all of a sudden it becomes a million seller and they've made a ton of money off of it, right? So the the process of Kickstarter becoming over being overwhelmed by a deluge of all these projects that don't make any sense is not surprising. No. And and see, that's something... There's nothing to vet them out, right? Well, especially since... Uh, well, it's the people that vet them out. You theory. would hope, right? Um, but, at the, but at the end, though, I would argue that it's the concept that makes something win. Yes. Uh, so it's not that the people, you know, want to put up money for something. It's but on so so to say that an indie game to be popular needs to be different is yes. is I don't think saying anything well newer. Let's not say different. Side. Let's 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 say novel. Innovative novel. Uh, novel. Novel works. Because you know so <clears throat> it's interesting because of how many 2D side scrolling indie games there are. For example, I, I played Shoot Many Robots. Okay. At, at PAX East. Yeah, that looks like and, fun. It's it's a fun game, and it's it it's got some novelty to it. It's certainly not the first side-scrolling shooter that I've ever played in my life. Mm-hmm. I played Contra. Uh huh. I've heard of that one. It's a good game. Yeah. Right. But so it doesn't reinvent the wheel. It just takes it. It has some novelty to it that is that is I would say unique mm-hmm. among its peers, and it's so unique. And and by the way, it's not so unique that it doesn't work. It's so unique, and the concept works so well that it's that I think it's going to be a very popular game. So, so I don't think it's anything groundbreaking to say that something has to be novel, or or more likely than not, has to be novel f- as an indie game to be noticed. Yes. But flip that around. <clears throat> do you see a lot of these indie games that do get noticed yes. if they were released by EA? Yes. Or, or, who knows? Square. Enix or something like that. Yep. Do you think they would be as well loved? No. If Minecraft in its exact same form was released by in its initial form when it got really big, essentially a beta, nothing like it is now. Well, companies don't release games like that. No, but regardless, that's what that's when it got big. That's when Notch was bringing in hand over fist, which is another interesting when, story. At right? that point, yeah. in beta, not even beta, but regardless, oh, that's a good let's question. just say beta. It's a good question. If, EA released Minecraft beta mm-hmm. under the EA name. Mm-hmm. Would people be going crazy over it? So I think I th- I think people would still be going crazy about it. I just don't know that it would have the same cachet that Minecraft enjoys today. See, I, I'm thinking that I'm thinking what Vulcan Assassin is thinking is that if EA released Minecraft, it would, people would have been looking at straight at the graphics and saying, "Man, EA can do better than that." That's I, crap. I I'm not even gonna play it. But guys, look. I, so I, I agree with that. I, I I get what you're saying. I think there's a lower standard for indie games because people realize of course, there has to be. Otherwise, there has to be because they can't compete in terms of they can pure right. man hours. Right. No. To make these games. No, and and they have very small staffs and and, and things like that. But the, the but the, but I think it is more important to look at something like Minecraft and say the premise is so good. The mechanics are so good. The game comes together in such an awesome kind of alchemical kind of way that no matter who publishes the game, now realize it would be very different because EA would never publish the game until it was done. So Minecraft didn't become a, 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 a new release until November, mm-hmm. right? Minecraft was was released as a game in November 
Would it become as popular as it is now? No, of course not. But you're, it's really apples and oranges. My point is, That's I think eventually something like Minecraft would absolutely become that popular because the concept is so good. Because games are, are an art form that are to be fostered, right? It's it's not that the Beatles might have, might have not been great when they came out, but when but by the time they really did hit it big, and by the time they were something unique, they were so much better than everybody else that the Beatles were inevitably going to become popular. I'd like to think you're right, but I don't think that's fully correct. And I, I so obviously I being think, such a lover of Beyond Good and Evil, I can't say that to yeah. the one hundred percent. If Beyond right, Good right. and Evil was released by, I mean, I know it's not his, his style, but if it was released independently by Tim Schafer next year, yeah, it would probably be hailed as one of the best indie independent games yes. ever. But just be. But remember, just being you know. hailed as one of the best independent games ever doesn't mean you sell a lot. I bet it would sell a lot more than it did. I'm just saying. It doesn't mean you sell a lot. I no. don't know. How much is Minecraft sold? Minecraft is an aberration at best. Okay, it very much is. Uh, Mark, you're out there. Or someone else who knows. How much has uh, Cave Story sold? Or Super Meat Boy? Super Meat Boy is extremely popular. Independent games? Or Braid. Braid. Braid's Braid, done very well. Braid's Psychonauts, so, so popular just simply because it's been on so many platforms. Um, I mean, you can play Braid on almost anything these days. I, I, you might even be able to play Braid on Roku. I don't even know. You can play Angry Birds on Roku. Why not? Another independent. Yeah, there you go. But something Rovio. completely different. Yep, it is. It's, it's a very different space. The mobile platform is extraordinarily different. It's different. And, and I, it's no reason apples and oranges, right? So here's Regardless. so, but but it's an interesting point. So I, I think whether or not Minecraft will be popular if it was released by EA, here's the enduring question: mm-hmm. Can independent games retain the kind of cachet they have right now, and continue as a business model to continue to be lucrative in the future? Yes, and I'll tell you why. Okay. It's the same thing, or the same reason why we're here right now talking to people on the internet with, you what? know. What do you mean? Yes, that's what we're doing right I now. I thought we were just taping this. Well, that too. Oh, whoops. Uh, where you can have two schmoes, one of which is half an hour late from his real life job, and so the other one has to grab his wife who is downstairs drinking her wine and petting cats. Well, at, least, at least she was drunk, I mean. Yeah, it helped. She wouldn't have come otherwise. Well, I'm perfect. She cursed a lot. It was perfect. No. Oh, man. Well, then, then you, people didn't get their money's worth. My point is that anyway. you got two schmoes that can do this and talk to people on the internet and be super F, F minus grade celebrity. Yes. Because of the internet. Because of all the... Anyone can do anything. Yeah. Because we're all connected. There's no. There's less intermediate. And things become emetic. I get it. I mean, I understand. And so you have something like Kickstarter come along. Yeah. Or Indiegogo or whatever. Yeah. And... You can have these projects that can catch fire. Yes. I mean, Tim Schafer is not a good example because he was no. already well known. And he worked for very, very successful companies that produced exactly. under very, very successful publishers. Exactly. If he wasn't with LucasArts, he probably never would have really been known. Correct. Regardless. <clears throat> there are other... Although you can argue... Well, anyway. anyway well, ahead. we could argue that. Yeah, well, yeah, we could argue that. Kickstarter is still a great platform, especially... At least Tim Schafer shone a light on Kickstarter and now it's exploding with all sorts of video game yes. ideas that are taking it, in tens of thousands of dollars. Joystick referred to it as the Kickstarter before Double, Double Fine era and post yes. Double Fine era. It's completely different. Yes, it is completely different. I mean, anyone who... <laughs> I know, obviously, it's not going to be the case, but anyone who comes up with a great video game idea and gets somewhat far along in development and then puts it up on Kickstarter has visions of, oh, man, I'm going to get $2 million. Just right. like, uh, wow, well, not Tim Burton, Tim Schafer. <laughs> Tim Burton. <laughs> and he'd make a movie that starred Johnny Depp. And, and Helena Bonham Carter. And everyone would and love it, it. And it'd be dark. And it'd be really and dark Elfman and scary. Would do the music. Yeah, and it would be, you know, kind of quirky. And Yes. I bet a lot of people would see it. Yes. Yeah. Hasn't he made like 20 of those? About. Yeah, 20. Yeah. Anyway. Um, um, get a new shtick, dude. Hey, there you go. You know? <laughs> Wasteland. Oh, yeah, the new Shadowrun game. Although, again, based on a previous license. Sorry, but no. Yeah, but that's still. a little bit different, guys. So it's, <clears throat> it, you could, like you say, Miss Pac-Man or Counter-Strike. And, right? I mean, those, those games yeah. were very popular and developed independently. And, again, maybe Mark could speak to this, but Dre2D2 asks a good question. But... 
is all Kickstarter doing is to fund already established franchises? And then he answered me before I asked the question. A lot of unknowns are lucky to get ten million. Sorry, ten thousand dollars on Kickstarter. Very, very, very true. But granted, that'd be ten thousand dollars they wouldn't have otherwise. But but that's my point. If the concept is good, and people are are hungry enough for the concept, the the best of the best rises to the top. And yeah, there's a lot. Of projects taking... Someone's going to do a Don Cherry video of me doing this. I'm going to stop doing that now. Anyway. um, Yeah, there's a lot of projects kind of flooding Kickstarter right now. Yeah, it is. And not just video games, all kinds of things. But that's going to settle down after this initial euphoria, and I'll tell you exactly why. I mean, Kickstarter, I'm sure, will still be a great platform for at least the next few years, yeah. and then the next big thing will come along. Regardless... It'll probably, I think it'll be more like eBay. If you it, know, like it'll have its heyday, and then it'll kind of... It'll you still know, be it's a still good there, game. but it's few and far between. Like Apple. Yeah, those guys are never going to make it big. Nope. Uh, regardless, um, if you go to the Kickstarter page, and I read up on this today because I was actually kind of interested. <clears throat> if you raise money for a project, can you just take that money and go to Mexico? Go to Mexico. Sure. No. Why not? Well, you could, but you would be under some legal issues. Well, I mean. Obviously. That, that hasn't stopped people before. Has it? I mean, well, you, the question you asked was, could you go to Mexico? I'm sure I could. My point being yeah. is yep. that there are... You, you probably wouldn't want to. You are held to... Uh, Greetings from Mexico, says Basara. That's right, see? Who's now you know, what, done the Kickstarter. Everybody paid him $10,000. Uh, and now he's he living up in... in Basara, uh, former independent game developer, now yes. in Mexico. Now so. in Mexico and watching a podcast of F-level celebrities on the internet. Exactly. Yes. So, my point being, initially, that I was trying to talk about two minutes ago, was... Um, is that the, there are standards on Kickstarter? What what uh, what is my responsibility uh, 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 for fulfilling the premises of a project? This is from the Kickstarter page. It is the responsibility of the project creator to fulfill to fulfill the promises of their project. Yes. Kickstarter reviews projects to ensure they do not avi- violate these guidelines. There you go. So there's some kind of quality <clears throat> control here. Right. And so. So basically, first of all, you need to set a goal. If you don't meet that goal, it doesn't get funded at all. Right. It all goes back to the initial donators. Yes. Secondly, uh, if you promise something in a project and it's deemed that you didn't meet those requirements, it says right here that you – where is it? Ah, a failure – to uh, okay, sorry. If you're unable to fulfill the promises (laughs) made to backers – cannot complete the project as advertised or decide to abandon the project for any reason, you are expected to cancel funding. A failure to do so could result in damage to your reputation, duh, or even legal action on behalf of your backers. Right. Kickstarter is not going to be backing you if you back out of uh, your promises after someone, a bunch of people have donated $100,000 to your project. Which, by the way, I need to know your rich <laughs> friends if that's the case. Exactly. Yeah. So, so my point being in this whole thing is that yeah, there's a lot of projects right now on Kickstarter. And it seems like there's a lot of crap to wade through. But as people realize that they can't make an FPS for $200,000. No. It's not a like very that's, good one. Stuff like that's going to fall by the way. So the euphoria is going to go off and then you're only going to have more serious projects. If you have some extra money, if you're interested in... And, and this is the great thing about Kickstarter. You've got though. the cache laying around. Check around and see if there's... A, they have a, a video game section right on their front page where you can just browse... To see what video game projects are out there. Maybe you have a spare thirty bucks and you want to give someone a little bit of a chance. It's it's crowdsourcing venture capital, which that's right, which is what I love about it. Which is it brings me back to the point that it is something that we did have a point could meet a critic a point of critical mass and could see an explosion that then kind of rescinds back into something that's very different, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm just I just. I think that independent games are, in many ways, uh, a great. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this as a um, this is this is a, a play on words, a pun, if you will. Oh God, a Kickstarter for the video game industry proper, for the EAs of the world. So, for example, well, so it, look at something like Paranormal Activity. Was that the name of the movie? Yeah, yeah. Paranormal Activity is made by a very was was made for very very little money. I think under a hundred grand, like ten bucks and some chewing gum. Right. Yeah. It wasn't a lot. So you know, borrowed camera. Have you ever heard of Primer? Yes. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. 
I haven't seen either.